Well, you know, it's always an exciting time of the year to, to get going with real practice. Obviously, times have changed. Uh, we, you know, we have the guys in the spring. We have the guys in the summer. We have the guys in the fall. And, and we've had some, I call them mini practices. You kind of slowly but surely build up. But now it's the real stuff. But you still have six weeks. Um, you know, I, I was talking, I, you talk to older coaches that are out of the business. And when does practice start? October 15th. Oh, no, it doesn't start. It starts uh, six weeks before. And so it's, it's a little bit different. But at the same time, um, you know, it's still, there's some excitement there. Um, we're going to have an open practice, uh, get some people in the stands, hopefully Saturday before the football game. One, to, you know, get our guys out in front of people, but also, you know, for our people, our fans to get to know who our, our players are. So, um, you know, it, it's, we've had, a, you know, the times I've met with you guys or talked to you, we had a great spring, um, uh, uh, work very hard on offense, uh, you know, continue to improve their weaknesses. Uh, the summer, it was it was kind of a combination, working on your offensive part of your game. But also, you know, it was important with five new guys to build some chemistry, to build some togetherness. Um, I think if you ask any member on our staff, the first thing when you say, what's the best thing about our team is that they get along. They enjoy each other. They, they've been, they, it, it, and I don't know why, to be honest, i I wish I wish it was some magical thing I did, but they just are uh, even the new guys. You got three older guys that joined us and and Mark Ish and, and Marquise and they've they just jumped in like they've been here forever. And they're, and they're they're friends with everybody. So, um, you know, that that was kind of the summer and, and a little building some, uh, you know, starting to build some toughness. Uh, our big theme was grit. Um, you know, trying for greatness, representing K-State intensity and toughness and togetherness. And, um, you know, we, we've used that theme throughout the summer into the fall. Um, we did go through a little bit of a um, boot camp last week with uh, the, the program and, and can't say enough about that. I had not really done anything like that before. We've, we've had some uh, different, uh, you know, events with our our strength coaches put together and competitions and strongman things and but this was with uh, you know two f former marines that came in um i i was i couldn't be more happy with what happened our our big thing with that was you know the toughness part but also the the details and discipline that of the drills they put them through and then probably most importantly i wanted to uh, have them come together as a group and deal with uh, tough times. And when you're in the pool and you got to take your sweatshirt off and, and, and put it back on and, and help your teammates and you don't know how to swim, uh, that was a, a really tough thing for those guys to do. So uh, it, 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 it really worked out well. I couldn't be more happy with how the guys reacted to us building some leadership, finding out who the leaders were, uh, you know, and who stepped up to help their teammates. So, you know, now it's real practice and, you know, start to put your concepts in your five on five and, and uh, get that conditioning. But uh, we got to go a ways to go. We got uh, October 23rd, we are scrimmaging. That'll be our first uh, opportunity. Uh, we'll actually have an open scrimmage before the Iowa State football game. Then the 23rd, we have a scrimmage against the opponent. And then uh, and we have our first exhibition game. So we got a ways to go, but uh, excited to have the opportunity, excited about the group. Thank you, Coach. Uh, I'll take our first question from Kellis Robinette. Bruce, good to see you again. Yeah. Um, we haven't gotten to ask you this yet. What do you think of the new look Big 12? How good is it going to be in basketball once those four new schools come in? Well, I, I, I'm thrilled with you know, what happened, the scenario that happened. I think we all, a few weeks ago, months ago, you know, it was, it was limbo and, you know, where are we going to, the eight going to stay together? I, I, you know, I didn't know. I, you, you guys might know more than me, but um, you know, and I, you know, we had talked, you know, Gene Taylor's met with us. I talked to Casey Scott every week just to kind of, you know, keep feedback and see if we can help. But uh, uh, you know, I, you know, our eight stuck together and we added a, a good group. Obviously, 
football wise, it really looks good now with BYU and Cincinnati, you know, having a great years in football. Obviously, I think the important thing was the, the media part and the population base. Uh, you're getting four schools that have great following that come from media outlets that that we need, you know, for our next TV contract. So uh, it, I don't like change. I love where our league was. I, I Again, I've always said, uh, you know, they said, what's the best league last? I did that coach versus cancer. It's the big 12. It's not even, it's a fact. And, and in basketball, especially, um, you know, we've been so good and I didn't like the change, but uh, you know, life is about change and flexibility and, and, you know, dealing with new things. And, you know, I, I, as I said, to start the, the scenario to get those teams um, is, is a positive thing. So you, you think the big Twelve will still be the best conference round in hoops? I think you got some pretty good basketball teams too. Uh, you know, BYU has, has had success, been in the NCAA tournament. Um, obviously Cincinnati has had really good success. You, you had Houston in the final four. If you look at it, we got two final four teams in our league, uh, Baylor and Houston. So it, it, you know, that part is good. And, and then central Florida, uh, they've had a pretty good run and, and, uh, they were in the NCAA a few years ago, played Duke in that crazy game. And, um, I think everybody watched and, um, you know, I, I think it's good. I, I think, and, you know, the, the thing is, I, I say all the time, how many times have uh, Oklahoma and Texas won the Big 12 basketball in the last 10 years? I, I think it's a pretty easy answer. So, I, and they've been great. Lon, what Lon did at Oklahoma, you know, just, you know, every year they were, they were good. Obviously, t you know, Texas is shock at a good run, won the tournament last year, but, um, you know, we still got the, the, you know, who's won the big 12 Kansas, K state, Texas tech, Baylor, uh, those schools are all there. Um, you know, we get Oklahoma state had the good run. You still got good basketball schools. So it's, uh, I think we're in good shape. And, uh, if you had to pick one guy, who would you say was the surprise of the summer from your team? Um, I, I think right now, I, Maybe overall, it, it might be Mark Smith. Um, just when I'm talking leadership, uh, being a good teammate, happy, working hard. Uh, and we got a lot of guys. I hate, I don't, it's hard for me to single anybody out. As I said before, all the newcomers have been very, very, uh, you know, receptive. They, they've jumped in, uh, you know, trusting and, and want to work. Um, but I, I, you know, it, it, I didn't know with Mark being in two different programs, being a little older, you know, I, I, I was, I just didn't know, to be honest. And I told him that the other day I met with him. I just said, are you always happy? I asked Conzo last night, was he always happy all the time? So he, he comes every day with a great attitude and a smile on his face and wants to get better. So I, I, I guess if there's one player, I guess, you know, he'd, he'd be the guy. Thanks Bruce. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we'll go to Michael in just a second, but if you guys have a question, just raise the hand up in uh, Zoom and I'll make sure to get to you. Uh, next question to Michael Goins. Hi, Bruce. Good morning. Um, good morning. With your bigs this year, what kind of progress did you need from them in the offseason and especially Davion Bradford? Well, I think the big thing was Casey getting them healthy and, and we just met as a staff and that's why I came on a little late. Uh, Casey's made some stride. Um, you know, he's, 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 uh, he's in getting where he's feels good. I don't know if he's ever going to get where he was, um, but he he's making some strides and getting a little healthier. Um, you know, Davion, it's just getting stronger and, and better and better condition. And uh, he's had, you know, he's, he's made some strides with it. I we'd like more. I think he wants more uh, this, this next six weeks will be really key for him. Uh, but if we can have him, and and Casey healthy, I think you got a pretty good one-two punch. Um, you know, Carlton still is recovering from his uh, procedure in last uh, late last spring. Um, so starting to get him back. Logan is uh, gives us another big guy. He's got uh, you know when you talk about surprises, I think he's done well. I think he's made as much improvement as anybody over the summer. Um, so we're we're positive about him. And the one thing I. 
and I, it, I, you know, I didn't, I should mention it. Surrey obviously uh, had a, a severe injury this fall. He had surgery uh, a couple of weeks ago or 10 days ago. Um, you know, he, he's going to miss the season. So it, it leaves our numbers with, with big guys a, a little bit low with him, him until Carlton gets back. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, we're just hoping those main two guys uh, continue to stay in good shape and stay in good health and, and see if we can get Logan better and, and, and understanding what's going on. And then, you know, I guess a bonus would be getting Carlton uh, back and, and going because he, with his shooting ability, his length, uh, he could give us something that the other guys don't give us. You mentioned a few of them there. It seems you're, you're... Offense works better with a quality stretch four. Who do you see fitting into those roles this season? Well, it's just been a, a perfect scenario, you know, for us getting a guy that, uh, you know, I think everyone's offense works better if you're if your form if your forward can do guard things and has some length. And I think Ish has, you know, he, he's got length. He's a little taller than I even thought he'd be. Um, you know, as I said, great attitude, happy, works hard, uh, been a really good teammate. Uh, you know, the uh, he he is, he can really shoot the basketball, and um, you know, his is kind of figuring out when, how do I get open shots and in, in the offense, and you know, when's a good time to shoot. Plus, to do some of the other things, I think that's our thing with him. But you know, he's been uh, he's been a he's been good for us. Um, you know, behind that, I think you're going to end up playing, uh, you know, four, four perimeter guys, uh, you know, though our best players are perimeter guys and, uh, you know, from, you know, Nigel and Marquise to, you know, Selton and, and, and Mike and Mark, um, you know, to, to Luke and, and, you know, and, and then, you know, Max coming, coming back from surgery, uh, you know, I think you have along with Ish, you have some really good perimeter guys that can do some things. And, uh, you know, what, what is modern basketball? It's, it's small ball. And, and where do we have success at the end of the last year's small ball? I think we added Ish to that mix uh, and we can play small ball with somebody with some size. And then we could come at people uh, with, with four little guys. And, and, and I, I think a little more depth, obviously if we stay healthy with those guards, and I, I hope we can get after people and use uh, Selton's ball pressure and, and Marquise can get into people. Mark um, has been a surprise for me on his, his athleticism. Um, uh, he's got the big body. He's strong. Uh, and then we know Mike and uh, Luke and, and Nigel have, you know, been a year, you know, Mike obviously been with us a long time, but the other two a little better a year, year into our defense have better understanding. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, next question to Greg Palmero. Coach, um, talking about Luke, um, he obviously had a, a real rough go of it last year. And um, how do you kind of evaluate where he is at this point and uh, being healthy and, and getting a, a full year into your program? Well, he is healthy and he did have a tough go of it. I think two contact tracings, I think COVID, uh, the foot injury, the surgery, uh, putting him in against Texas with about five days of practice. Um, but, you know, he just quietly does his job and great support from his parents and, and uh, is starting to make some shots. And so he, uh, his, for me, the biggest surprise last year was his defense. And that's what I really worried about but he's really kind of, he, he stops people. I, I don't know if you remember last year in that big 12 game, they kept trying to ISO Davion Mitchell on a switch on Luke and Luke kept standing them up. And uh, you know, that he's, he's taking a little bit of pride and he's, he's got that. He chests people, maybe they're not the quickest, but he's, he's got some smarts on defense and, and he, he can, he moves his feet really well and he'll use his body. So um, he can give us that, you know, small ball forward. Uh, I, I don't, I, you know, now it's just making some shots. And part of it last year, you know, him trying to make shots, I said many times we put him in a tough situation, no practice. 
you know, and putting them in a big 12. Oh, you're going to play against a team that got four plays players drafted in the NBA draft. And you, you practice five times in four months. And, you know, but again, he did, he kept a smile on his face, kept coming back, got better. And uh, I, I think that'll, you know, he's just going to kind of be our X factor, quiet guy that just does his job every day. And then lastly, on, on Bradford, uh, I know he was uh, one of your pleasant surprises last fall, um, being in a position to, to play how he did as a freshman. Um, in addition to the, the health factor, what does he have to do to, to make that jump from freshman to sophomore year? I, you know, again, I said before, just the strength, um, a little better condition. Uh, you know, the strength to, to so his leg, uh, you know, gets stronger. He's had the, a, a quad injury knee type thing since he was in high school that we just need to get it stronger and, and, and put as much as least pressure on that leg as possible. So and then where he can maybe get a little more explosive um, with his jumping. And, you know, he, he he wants to step out and he's he's worked on that. The little Sigma move in the post. He's worked on that little 12 footer. Um, you know, all guys want to advance their game and that's fine, but we also got to advance the, the things that he does well and what he did for us. And obviously we, you know, the last game against Baylor was one of his best games or maybe the best against a quality, obviously a national championship, pretty good quality opponent. So, you know, now can he have that drive and push to continue to, to do that type of thing on a, a consistent basis. I guess one word I would use for him, if you ask what does he need to do to improve, be consistent. And that, you know, give that consistent uh, out production every game. Thanks coach. Uh, next question to uh, Scott Fritchen. Hey Bruce, how are you today? Um, uh, congrats. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm writing for the K-State Athletic Department now. I'm uh, really <laughs> excited about it. Um, I wanted to write a story about the program because uh, I know it's it's been around. They kind of tour around. Um, first off, uh, maybe who recommended the program to you? Who do you hear from it? Well, they, they've been, you know, they contact us all the time. And, you know, it, it is, you know, uh, you know, it's, you, do you, you have the time to do it. Um, Drew Spiro, when he was at Iowa uh, as a as a grad assistant, they they used them. Um, he thought it was pretty positive. Uh, Coach Snyder did use them his last year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we kind of checked around, or our, our strength coach kind of checked around with some of their people. Um, everyone was real positive. And then last year during COVID, it's kind of ironic. Eric, uh, who runs it, uh, is from Connecticut, and and. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, he had contacted us and then Mike McGurl's old high school coach called me and said, hey, you know, Eric does this. He'd love to Zoom with your guys. And, you know, just everyone was looking for something, to, you know, to help your guys and, and through tough times. So he came on and Zoom with us. Uh, unbelievable presentation. Uh, what he's done, uh, you know, the, you know, his the, his story about losing his his, his soldiers that were under him and a helicopter crash. And, you know, he had some of the guys, on, you know, miraculously survived um, his commitment to his soldiers, uh, kids and raising money through, through the program, also through Ironman competitions, uh, getting sponsors, uh, they climbing uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, all these different things that he does. And, and, you know, all the money goes to those, his soldiers, children, so they can go to college and, and have a good upbringing. So um, just, it's, it's a pretty cool story. And, and, you know, I just, I went to Casey Scott and I said, I know it costs a lot, but I think it would be good for our guys. And, and I, you know, we, we put a lot of things on hold the, the, the last year. He okayed it. If he, he's, he was kind of dependent on me, I thought, and again, I, I thought it was excellent. And the, our two, two, their two representatives with us that were here were Mac and Fred and did an unbelievable job. And, uh, you know, their evaluation of our guys uh, was unbelievable. Their feedback, they spent two hours with us Friday morning as a staff, you know, just helping us with some ideas to help the players. 
and then they've already contacted our guys. So it's a, they, they do a good job. It, it was definitely worth it. Well, second, second question. Um, I saw a little bit of video. I think it was of, uh, Max addressing uh, your team in the in the uh, team meeting room, the theater room, and he was asking who are going to be the leaders. Yeah. In, in your estimation, who are who are the leaders? Maybe who emerged from that? Well, I think the the thing they talked about, you know, one of the most important things is we got to have great teammates first. And how do you do that? You know, you you set the example. Um, I think that starts with Mike McGurl. It starts with you know, the guys that had success last year, your Nigels and Selton's understand what we want on a daily basis. Uh, that's important. And then, then who is going to hold people accountable? That's their next thing. And that's where the leadership really comes in play. And, and they flat out ask our guys who, who, who likes holding people accountable. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. And, um, there were a lot of guys that raised their hands. So I do not like to do that and I'm not comfortable with it. So I, I, I think that I would say uh, Mark Smith jumped out. I, I, they picked, they gave us an evaluation after it was over. They thought Mark Smith was the best leader from their two days. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and he's, and I've said to you guys, somebody asked me early, you know, who's been the biggest surprise. I think Mark is, is taking on that a little bit of that role. Not that that's not to uh, diminish Mike or anyone, Nigel or anyone else, um, you know, because they still are leaders in some way. Um, they also talk about first first row of command, second row of command, and you got to have your first row, and then you know who's going to be next, and that's where I think we can slowly surely do that. Selton's one of the guys that does the verbal part. Um, and then I think, you know, probably, I think if you ask the coaches, who's the best teammate on our team? And I, I've told, I've shared this with you guys before. It's been Davion. He, he every day, he, he's there to help you. He's, he's the one when Selton's, you know, sitting there crying, he's wiping his tears. And, um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, so we got a, a good mixture. But I think if you pick one guy right now, it may be Mark Smith. But we'll see more as, as practice goes on. Thank you, Bruce. Any other questions for Coach before we let him go? Oh, uh, two more. Okay, let's uh, go with Michael Goins again. Oh, Bruce, so, how would you uh, summarize N Nigel Pack's potential and what's he got to do to get there? Well, it, you know, he obviously uh, had a really good freshman year. I, I'm still disappointed that he didn't get acknowledged in the Big 12, but I, I think it, it gave a little motivation going into that Big 12 tournament and had two unbelievable games to finish the year. Uh, we were talking with the Baylor coaches and over the summer uh, recruiting and, um, you know, Davion Mitchell and Jared and, uh, you know, and Butler and, Teague, they, you know, they had their way with a lot of people. And they said that the one guy they were always mad that they couldn't get the turnover was Nigel. And you look at his assist turnover ratio, um, you know, it's pretty impressive for a freshman. So um, I think just a little more confidence, um, his mojo, feeling good about himself, talking a little more, becoming a little better on defense. Um, and then I, I, I get a little bit of, uh, I use a, a word I probably can't use on this on the media, but, you know, get a little uh, stuff to his game, you know, add to his game, a little step back, a little make some plays uh, with contact at the end of the shot clock. Uh, obviously he can shoot. We did a shooting drill the other day that I got from coach Beeline and he shattered that drill. And then, you know, coach, I text coach Beeline after and he said, man, that's some of the best numbers I've ever seen. And I, he said, he's had some pretty good shooters through the years. Um, so, you know, those are the things, you know, that, that we know he'll do and he's consistent with, but, you know, just kind of add to the game, add a little moxie, a little confidence, a little talk. I think that if we can do that and be a little better defensively, you know, we'll have a, a special consistent player. And you mentioned qualities of being a good teammate. Does Mike McGurl fit that profile of 
yeah. personality that can take a uh, reduced role, reduced minutes, that kind of thing? Um, and that's it's one thing we've talked to all of them about, because a lot of them are going to have probably a few less minutes. But can you be more productive? Can you be more efficient in your minutes? And and because you're a little more rested, are you going to be better to also? Uh, uh, so and it, so we we've talked to Mike about that. And, and I, there's no doubt Mike's a great team. As soon as, um, you know, the program was over, Mike was text all the coaches and just said, thank you for doing it. I thought it was big time. And, and here, this is a fifth year guy. This is a guy that's in his, you know, he's been through it, been through the wars, but man, he's so appreciative. And we just, I think we all told him to the coach uh, that, you know, please enjoy, take advantage of the opportunity, enjoy it, make the most out of it. You know how special K-State is. Uh, let be grateful for this opportunity and make the most. And I, I'm pretty sure he will. Um, he still, and again, I haven't said he's not the leader, but, um, you know, I, I think as they said, you need good teams have multiple leaders. And I, I, I hope that, uh, Mike is in that group. Cause if he is, you know, he's older, more mature, he's been through it. He, he's got, you know, just get a little more consistent numbers and, and be a little more efficient. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. Next question to Ryan Gilbert. Hey, Coach. Uh, what does Curtis Kelly and also Zach Price bring to your team as GAs? Well, it's you know it's always good to have a former guy come back, and this is uh, I I didn't obviously I didn't coach Curtis, but he did come back off and on. He worked camp. I, I love from day one his enthusiasm, his love for the game, his passion for the game. Uh, you know, he, 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 he comes every day with a, a smile, with some energy. He's, he's always talking to the players, um, encouraging, you know, and obviously he's a guy that had success, played overseas, um, played professional basketball for a long time. So I hope they're, they, they're willing to listen to him. I, he's got a good temperament. And um, so, it, it, you know, I, I'm so happy. I'd, I'd love to always have all players back. But, um, you know, and then Zach, you know, a little older guy that's been, uh, you know, assistant coach at a, for a very good coach and coach Fritz and, and came through, uh, you know, coach Weiberg, you know, played coach Weiberg um, at, at Missouri Western and, and been around good people. And um, so, he, you know, he, he brings a little more maturity for us and somebody a little older and, and uh, you know, not afraid to get his, you know, hands dirty and do some of the little things that need to be done. So um, excited about that, you know, having those guys uh, proud of our guys that, uh, you know, we're here and uh, you know, we're, we're really proud too. When somebody brought it up to us, we're 11 for 11. Our grad assistants have all graduated, got their master's degree. I know Shane put that uh, diploma up in his office and he's proud of it. Jordan getting on now with the, uh, you know, really positive for him to get out with the Lakers, uh, J.O., um, and have that opportunity as a, as a interim or an intern. And uh, so hopefully it, uh, you know, paid some dividends for those guys and, and he got his diploma also. Uh, next question to Ryan Black. Hey, Bruce, uh, I, I just want to go back to – to Siri for a second. Um, prior to this injury, he had how much progress had he shown since kind of the end of last season? Well, he had, you know, that's the sad part. I, I, he had started to figure it out how hard you have to play and, and the intensity at, at this level. I think that was, you know, that was, you know, one, we didn't have practice and he was a contact trace twice. He missed, I don't know how many days and, and he just, you know, he was behind. He, there's no doubt. He was a and I would have probably rentured him if, if, you know, if it was a regular year, but um, you know, he, he was starting to make some progress and then, you know, we had the injury. And so it's uh, you know, it's, it's sad for him, but we just like a lot of anyone that gets hurt, we always say use this as a, you know, as a opportunity to get better at something and, and make a negative into a positive. And, you know, we, we talked about Cartier, having the, the the knee injury when he was a freshman and 
going from 42 inch vertical to 45. I mean, you know, a lot can happen. There's been uh, a lot of people with these, you know, these knee injuries that have come back. And so we're just hoping, wish the best for him. And, and it's going to be a long six, seven months for him, but we got to be there to help and support and help that hope that he continues to make the progress and takes the, the steps to be ready a year from now. And then last thing on that, just pr prior to this surgery, what, uh, what did you and the coaching staff not told him about what you thought his role would be this season? I, th I think it was still up in the air, but, you know, we, you know, do we have him as the give us that uh, athletic big guy that a little different than some of the other guys we have? I think that was the, the thing we were looking for him. He, he, you know, obviously explosive jumper runner, you know, just elite athlete. And, and so as a big guy, could he give us that at the five and maybe the four? So that's that's what we were kind of looking at. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, another question for Kellis Robinette. Follow up on that, Bruce. Is it a torn ACL on Siri? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. I just wanted to ask that. And uh, what's it like to coach Mike again, being around a guy that long? Uh, you know, it, it's a pleasure. Uh, to be honest. And, and I, you know, he's said, sent some texts, text messages, you know, just, I think he's just happy because uh, he went through some doubt. Uh, there's a lot of guys that left programs that have been there. Um, I think he felt he, you know, I know he had, we had the backing of his parents. We had the backing of his high school coach. Uh, they wanted him to stay. They thought it was the best thing for him. Um, you know, and, and, you know, just, for him to do that, I think it's great. And I, I just want him to have success and, and reach some of his dreams and goals. And he wants to leave here on a, a positive note, um, you know, being, you know, being part of a, a special team and being the leader. And um, I, I hope he, he gets that he gets to where he wants to go. Thanks Bruce.